I must be out of my mind. I, w- I got done with that and I thought, man, I thought there was something else I needed to do. And I, there it totally is. I forgot the dreaded repository pattern. And so we need to implement that. So uh, it's really not dreaded. It's, it's a piece of cake. So what we do is we've got this context file, but we don't want our controller to access directly the context file. We want on purpose this layer in between that abstracts that, that database makes it so it could be whatever so that I can test easier as I'm building my project. And so all we do is a couple things. One is we come in here and we say add a new item. Now you'll notice one of the items is an interface. And so I can go in and select that interface and say this is going to be my uh, iFood repository. Okay, so my iFood repository, I add that, and the only difference is instead of saying public class, it's going to say public interface. And as you'll recall, this is our uh, dictating the structure of the class that's going to need to be built out of this. And so this is our template for our template. This is the rules for our template. How about we say that? And so in here, it's going to be really simple. We're going to need just a, a couple things. In fact, for what we have now, we only need to set up one thing, which is a way to get at the data that's going to come out of this repository. And so I'm going to set up um, something called an I enumerable. And the reason I'm not using an I queryable is because we're going to change the way that we pass the data to the API. We, we could use an I queryable, but it's going to want an enumerable, which is just a, a data structure like a list that you can loop through. And so it's more generic. This is an I enumerable data that we can loop through. So an I enumerable of type, well, what type of information is it going to be? It's going to be our Marriott food type that I'm going to refer to as foods. Okay. And we're going to allow the ability to get that information. Okay. So that's our interface. And then we set up our implementation of the interface. So this is going to be a new class that we can just, a lot of times we just follow the same pattern. You don't necessarily have to name it this, but it sure makes it easy when you're looking. So EF food repository, add that. And it's in order for it to work, if we inherit, which we're going to need to do from the iFood repository, it's going to say what you haven't implemented what you were supposed to. This said you were supposed to create a I enumerable called foods, but you haven't done that. Whoops, you haven't done that here. And so if I hover over that and say implement the interface, it will, but it doesn't know where to get the data. So it just says, I'm going to throw an error saying it was never implemented. Well, we don't want that. Let's just leave this blank for now. But I need to load up this, this foods with some actual data. Well, where's the data coming from? It's coming from the context file, right? That's our liaison between uh, the, the app and the actual database. And so we're going to say, hey, when we make a chain or when we go get data, we're going to go get it from that context file. And so you might recall here, we need to set up our, <coughs> excuse me, too much talking. We need to set up our constructor. And as part of our constructor, we're going to say, hey, when you create an instance of an EF food repository, then what I want you to do is to pass me in an instance of the context file. So go get me a food context that I'll just refer to as temp. And then what I want to do is to create a variable that can be seen in the scope of this entire class. Let's go in and build a, a private variable here called um, our, our uh, context file. We can call it whatever we want, but it's going to be a, of type. Uh, food context, and we can refer to it as our, I mean, I could just do underscore food context, which is what it was suggesting. It, it really doesn't matter, well, too much. And that's, so that go create an instance of our food context file. And so we'll set that up. And then here we can say, go to that instance food context and set it equal to whatever was handed in at temp when this class was created. All right, so we're almost good there. But then in order to get the foods, we're going to go out to our co food context file and set it, uh, and whoops, 
equal sign, equal sign, food context. We're going to go out to that variable. It's not an equal sign. It's a lambda, right? This is sad. Uh, food context dot, um, what's the name of the table? Foods. Okay, so we're gonna go grab that information and put it into an I enumerable. All right, so we've set up our I food repository, which is the generic version of an EF food repository. We've gone and implemented that interface in an I food repository, and we're creating an I enumerable called foods that we load up with um, data from the context file, which is the instance of the database in .NET. All right, what's our last step? Do you remember? We gotta do one more thing. So in our uh, program CS file, you might recall that we need to make an entry here. So builder.services. And then I'll say uh, add scoped. And we're going to, oops, angle brackets. And then we say, what is the name of the add scope? Why is it not liking my angle brackets? It keeps turning them into braces. Uh, Add scoped. I'm just hitting the wrong key as it turns out. Uh, actually, look down at my keyboard. That's helpful. Add scope. So we're going to add an I food repository, and that is going to relate to the EF food repository. And again, uh, it's confusing, 100%. But all we're doing here is saying, as the client logs onto our, our server and tries to grab an instance of this, Go take the generic iFood repository that we're going to refer to in our controller and create an instance for them of the EF food repository so that everybody has their own class in our memory on the server that has that uh, data for that particular class for that uh, client, right? So as we package it up and send it down, it's going to have that specific data. But our program always refers to the generic version that applies to all EF food repository instances, if that makes sense. So that way, when we write our controller here in a second, we're going to just use I food repository rather than EF food repository. And that is this process of abstraction so that when we get in our controller and, and pull the data from there, we're not accessing the database directly. Instead, we access it through this EF food repository class where we go and load up this data. All right, so again, one of the big things in this class is just repetition, doing it over and over again. And the more we do it, the more hopefully you understood this time than you did last time. And as you keep experiencing it and as you get more experience and practice, then you'll understand it better and better. So that's the repository pattern. We're all set up and ready to go to our controller. Spencer out.